After over a month of bizarre and bad press, <laughs> Don't Worry Darling finally opens in theaters. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much with that in mind. Go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Let me know what did you think about the movie Don't Worry Darling, or what is your excitement level for it? Now, this is an interesting movie because the bad press of everything that went on behind the scenes has eclipsed the buzz surrounding the film itself. It seemed like because Olivia Wilde's previous film, Book Smart, was well-reviewed and people enjoyed it. There was a lot of excitement for this film, but it was about the film itself. It's got some star power. People are excited to see more of Florence Pugh. But then over the last two months, there's just been a series of bad headlines surrounding this movie and what on, went on behind the scenes, who's mad at who, who was paid what, did someone spit on someone else at the premiere of the film, all this bizarre stuff that has become what everyone is talking about surrounding the film rather than the movie itself. But now the movie is here for people to see. Here's what I thought about it. Let's get started with the good. And right off the bat, you just have to talk about Florence Pugh. She is the real deal. She is here to stay. And you see the full range of her talent on display here where she shows happiness and charisma, tragedy, horror, terror, there's a, a very complex array of emotions because of the very nature of the film. It's this world where superficially things seem one way, but there's something going on underneath the surface. And she has a performance that can convey that where she has what she's trying to portray to the people around her but she's also able to communicate to the audience what's really going on inside of her. A very nuanced, complex performance in almost every single scene of the film and can seamlessly transition from being happy to confused to being horrified in a very short window of time. Likewise, Chris Pine um, is able to kind of bring the kind of this charismatic cult-like leader Per type performance to his role. It's not as complex of a role because he's not as front and center and inherently the nature of it, he's the kind of the showman trying to sell something, but he's able to do that wonderfully. Other good thing here is that Olivia Wilde is able to kind of create the right atmosphere where right out of the gate, you're having fun in this world that they're in and quickly transition to realizing something's not quite right and you sense that, and it just captures that energy of things look perfect, but a little bit too perfect. They're a little bit too uniform. And then as it goes along, just captures that sense of unease and growing tension. And just the aesthetics of everything look fantastic. The production design, the way that it looks, the way that it's framed. She just has a real good eye for a lot of those types of details. And during the first kind of two thirds of the movie where there's a lot of the tension building and odd things taking place, just very much appropriately you feel everything you're supposed to feel in those moments. And another element that adds to that is that there's some really nice use of sound and music, just with the way that it swells, but not like it's it's very, it's a kind of offbeat type of score, but appropriately offbeat for the film that you're in that builds that tension, the unease, the, the sound design in certain settings, the, the way that you hear certain things and when you hear it, just all of it growing that tension through the performance, through the choice of shots, through the use of sound and music, all of it appropriately escalating the unease and the tension as you watch the film. And that that's really what the movie does well. It creates a mystery and intrigue that you really want to know what, what's going on here, what's, what's really underneath the surface. And the way that it does some of it, it, it has a lot of trippy, weird visuals at times where it's kind of showing you kind of intercuts in strange stuff and you don't know what it is and like psychedelic at times, but it does it in a way that's still kind of, it doesn't come off, you know, offbeat, uh, too offbeat, still feels like accessible while having trippy elements to it. 
And so if you kind of like like thrillers with that mystery what's going on kind of Twilight Zone-esque. The first two thirds of this movie do a great job of that. You have a couple of, or at least one fantastic performance and then some other really solid performances in the film. So it does a really nice job for two thirds of the runtime. And then for me, the movie really falls apart as it starts to give answers to what's going on. So let's move on to the bad. So with a movie like this, it's all about building intrigue surrounding a mystery for the first two thirds of the movie. And when they're done well, they provide an answer that releases all that tension that's been built and provides a satisfying answer that pulls everything together. And you're like, oh, that was cool. And at the same time with movies like this, it can be going really well for two thirds, but if you get to a point in time and it gives you the answer and it's not a satisfying one, the whole movie feels like kind of a waste of time. You're like, really? That's what this was? And that's how this movie played out for me. As I was watching it, I was thinking in my mind, I hope it's not building towards this at the end of it. I hope that it's not gonna end at this point in time. And you go through the movie, and it's something in the ballpark of what I was afraid it was going to do. And then the movie keeps going and revealing more and more and more and gets weirder and weirder and dumber and dumber. So by the end of it, I was like, really? This is what you were going for with this film the entire time? And it just undid the entire thing for me on both like a plot coherence level because it, it's like she was so dead, Olivia Wilde was so dead on set on com exploring these themes about how women are trapped in women's happiness and what other people think that will make women happy. It's so dead set on exploring those through Olivia Wilde's very narrow worldview that it just comes to a very dumb conclusion at the end that you're like, this doesn't make any sense. This doesn't hold up. It's way overstating its point. It's kind of offensive if you even stop to think about what she's actually communicating here. So it just fell apart for me as it started making these more and more reveals about what was going on to the point that was just rolling my eyes at the end of it. And even as the final moments happen and the credits start rolling, I was like, that's, it doesn't even, it's not even a satisfying resolution to everything that you had there, everything that you're trying to do there. It's just like, okay, I see what you were going for. That really didn't work for me. And I, I think so much of it isn't helped by a bunch of the comments that Olivia Wilde has made about what she was trying to do with the movie, what she was trying to communicate, who inspired specific characters, and with how extreme the movie goes and leaning so hard in the final reveals of the movie, I was just like, eh, you just seem really out of touch right now. Like you don't understand the people that you're trying to critique or, or where they're coming from at all. You're just, you're responding to a caricature and all of this just falls flat because of it. Uh, it, it plays out like most of the post signs M. Night Shyamalan films where you're like, okay, this is okay. Let's see what we're, this is kind of interesting. And then you go, oh, nope, that didn't work at all. That was not a good direction to take any of this. Other thing to talk about in here is, is Harry Styles. I don't think he's a, he's a bad, I don't think he's a bad actor, but he's a, uh, inexperienced actor. He's a very young actor compared to him as a performer and a singer, in which case he can portray single emotions. So in a scene where he needs to be charming, he can be fun and charming. In a scene where he needs to be upset, he can be upset. But he's in a movie that's all about the layers, where there's always the surface level of what's going on and what we're experiencing, and then there's everything going on underneath the surface. And he just can't give that kind of nuanced performance with the layers. And he's acting against Florence Pugh, who's maybe the biggest up and coming actress of the last three years, who can be fun and charming in a blockbuster, but then she can also be have give this very complex performance in an indie film or a drama. He's acting against someone that can have all the layers and it just highlights his limitations as an actor. And he, he's just not the right person 
for a role that demands the complexity and the layers. And especially when you know that originally it was gonna be Shia LaBeouf who might be crazy as can be and, and worse perhaps, uh, according to allegations, but he can act. He, like, he can portray a nuanced, complex performance. That's who was supposed to be in this role. And just on the perspective of an actor, he's someone that would have brought so much more to these scenes than what Harry Styles is able to do. And so you just, you can see how there could have been, that character could have been much more interesting and compelling with an actual actor, not someone that's getting into acting and can do some, but not this type where it just demands a layered performance. So for me, this is a movie that much like the film itself, superficially looks really good but it's got a lot of issues going on on the inside. Florence Pugh is fantastic. The visuals, a lot of the tension building really work, but with a movie like this, you have to be able to pull it together in the end, and this movie didn't come together in the end for me. So ultimately, it didn't work. Overall, it's a C plus on the entertainment scale. We'll go a six out of 10, and you can just wait to stream this one if you're interested in watching it. So if you're wondering on my rating scale, that's like a mixed negative. It's right on that mixed negative is how I would define the score that I gave it. If you're really interested, no reason to go buy a ticket for it. Wait to stream it. Make up your own mind as to whether it worked or not for you. As for me, in the end, despite some solid elements superficially, it didn't come together in the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Join me down below in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about it and all the drama surrounding it. And keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.